Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. All the best. Thank you so much. And safe travel. Thank you. So I'll be cycling from here at WHO headquarters in, in Geneva um, to London where I'll meet up with a group of healthcare professionals who will be cycling from London to Glasgow to the big climate change conference that happens at the beginning of November. And what I'll be doing is delivering um, a report that was produced by WHO in partnership with the health community and a letter which has been signed by organisations representing about 45 million healthcare professionals uh, who are calling for stronger action on climate change. One of the things about climate change is that people make long-term promises on behalf of other people. There's a lot of blah 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 around this and one of the things that, that I and the healthcare workers that are cycling in the UK are trying to show is that we also have a personal commitment to this as well. The people who work in hospitals or those of us who work in global health I think take this quite personally, the, the, the effect of climate change on health. So it's also a personal commitment. We ask people to do things, but it's, it's also important for us to, to walk the talk, or, or in this case, to bike the talk. Well, I'm, this is a, a, a most amazing experience. I'm standing in the pod that is London of the pollution pods. And there's something about using images to really bring a message home. And there's something about these pods representing different cities and actually sort of tangibly being able to see how different the air quality is in each that really has, hits home. And I've noticed there are lots of children around today. One would hope that the message would be sinking in for them too, that actually you can't take it for granted that air is clean. We know that what happens in childhood often sets the scene for adult onset of disease. If we can intervene in childhood, we can actually prevent a lot of um, problems for adults later on in life. So th I think there's a really important message that can be conveyed through these amazing pollution pods. I'm going to hand over the responsibility um, for this. I can stop worrying about it now because I'm really pleased to hand it over to Finn for the, uh, the NHS workers to, to Very take Very much. To pass. That's good. Thanks, and I think uh, we will now have the anxiety of making sure we get it up to the conference, the climate conference in Scotland. The ride's starting in nine minutes. It's going to take us eight days and you're speaking to someone who um, is not really a cyclist. It's a real challenge, but it's, um, it's worth it, absolutely, definitely, because what could matter more than this? Today is Ride for Their Lives. It's day two of an eight-day ride between London and Glasgow just outside Birmingham Children's Hospital. And we're meeting with young people who are going to cycle with us to the Millennium Point Science Museum pollution pods. When I think of the world the future generation might live in, I think of a world where air pollution is suffocating us, a world where biodiversity is compromised, where our natural resources are exhausted. This shouldn't be a worry for anyone, and there is still hope that this can be reversed. We left Birmingham this morning and we're on our way to Sheffield. All of the world's health community coming together, sending a really strong message to the world leaders that they need to do more than they're doing. Talking is not enough. We desperately need more action. So Toby, we've made it to Sheffield, halfway through our ride from London to Glasgow for COP26. As you know, Dr. Campbell Endrum cycled from Geneva to give us this 
document to take with us up to Glasgow. It's the COP26 special report on climate change and health. We also have a healthy climate prescription that has been signed by organisations representing 45 million healthcare professionals, um, outlining the real significant changes that we want governments and policymakers to make. So I'm handing this over to you now to uh, carry it for the next four days up to Glasgow. Well, thank you very much for that, Finn. I will carry this. We'll be handing it over to a representative from COP26 who will then go and talk to world leaders about how things can be implemented. Quite fun actually as well to put it up as one piece. It's also the first time that I built it indoors, so that's that's been quite a special experience as well, uh, rather than uh, camp, uh, that's in the weather outside. Fortunately, we managed to have a great plan B of moving us inside the new uh, Health Institute Centre at the Lancaster University. It's a freshly built building, so it's an absolute pleasure to work here. Data does not change behaviour. We have the data, we have the science, but you don't change behaviour through data, you change it by changing the culture. One of the best examples of this is with smoking. I mean, we knew for decades that it gave you cancer, but there was just a certain point where it became culturally unacceptable to smoke. It's somehow socially and together, it has to become unacceptable to have certain types of behavior. It makes you realize that something needs to be done about it. It makes you realize that it's gonna get a lot worse if nothing's done. When we were told it was 2040, I, I was quite shocked. That's less than 20 years away. And it shows me that we all play a role in sort of um, preventing this from happening. Today's day five. This is the leg that everyone's been dreading the most. It's 90 miles from Harrogate to Newcastle. But we've also had a forecast of rain. When I kind of spoke to a lot of people about this, I said, you know, what's a bike ride going to achieve? And I said, well, if you look at the, the fact that so many people have signed the letter that has been written from Geneva to London, it's brought together so many children's hospitals and we've done some amazing things along the way. We're not going to tackle this in a day or in a week. We're not expecting people to kind of suddenly change the world in a month. But it's proven that a regular group of people can come together and really mobilise the conversation and each other. It's turned out to be the best leg so far. It's been phenomenal. We've met some amazing people. I mean, even though we knew we had 90 miles, we still took time to stop and talk to them and share the story along the way. That's what the ride's all about, connecting with people, sharing the message. We left Newcastle when it was pitch dark at half past seven this morning. We were given a fantastic send off by some staff at the Great North Children's Hospital. And then we made our way to Carlisle through some pretty awful weather. We know that children, for instance, who live in countries that are some of the poorest countries on the planet, those countries actually cause the least pollution and the least impact in terms of climate change. And yet they are the most impacted. Climate change is widening health inequalities, not just in the UK, but around the world. We see what this does to children. That really motivates me to want to get on my bicycle and cycle and make a noise and amplify the message. That's what gets me going and why I've, I've really enjoyed today. So over to Mark. I just want you to remember why we're here. Like, we've had a great time, haven't we? We've had a blast. It's been really enjoyable, I think. <laughs> but yeah. it, that wasn't why we did it, was it? Why we did it was to advocate for the children who are going to die because our Earth is not going in the right direction it needs to. And unless we take serious action, you know, their, their inheritance from us is, is nothing. So that's why I did it, like, from guilt or shame or whatever. But that doesn't mean that that's the right emotion or that's something we want to do. I think it's much better for us to take action. And I think action has made us happy and made, made us feel that we can actually achieve something. So 
turn our really happy, emotiony stuff that, for what we've achieved now, which is really important, into that in the whole world, and into that into the paediatric group. So let's work out how we can infuse other paediatric healthcare providers to do the same as what we've done, not riding bikes, but obviously riding bikes is part of it, but being really, really looking after each other, working together as a team and making a difference. <laughs> I'm not interested in being a voice. I want the medical professionals to be the voice, but I want this to be the platform from which they speak from, because from my point of view, um, the wards are not enough. People need to see and feel the air pollution. This is a great experience for children to go through. It really sets an agenda for them, and it's really powerful for them. They really bring that with them further. Well, why is it so polluted? Because you drive, because you're burning fires, open fires in the house, because we're buying too much. And there's this industry because of fossil fuels. And you're telling them that while they're breathing the fumes, that lasts with them. Thank you for joining us at the end of our 800 kilometre ride today. We've carried the Healthy Climate Prescription Letter and the uh, World Health Organization's Special Report on Climate Change and Health to COP to Demand Action, both of which are contained within this bag, decorated with instructions sent in by Great Ormond Street Young People's Forum members and what they will want to say to world leaders if they had the chance. The cities that we have cycled through, London, Birmingham, Sheffield, Newcastle and here in Glasgow, all contain children's hospitals where each and every day thousands of children and young people breathe toxic air whilst attending appointments and receiving life-saving care. Our ambition is for world leaders to listen and act to protect the planet for children and young people like myself. As the saying goes, action speaks louder than words. The actions that we wish to be taken from this is for world leaders to read the documents contained within this bag and do what they say. Thank you very much. <laughs>